Ten whole minutes. Ten whole minutes to myself. Gramila Margaret. Well, you've taken four seconds off me there, uh, Carhi Look, already. Um, first of all, I want to say it's an absolute disgrace that the Minister for Housing is not in the chamber here. It, I, I understand he was, but this is a practice that's been repeated by government ministers on a regular basis. At the start of this doll, they introduced a process whereby opposition TDs were slid down the pecking order when it came to an opportunity to speak so that they could put their own TDs up first. So that means the minister is not around to listen to other views in this chamber. He's only listening to the views that he can already hear in the parliamentary party meetings. And it's a sign of arrogance that the Minister for, for Housing would ignore so many representatives on the opposition side who represent tens of thousands of people, people in distress and in difficulty in this issue. And I'd like you to relay that to the minister, if, if you can at all. Well, I, I, I appreciate that, but there's nothing better than actually listening to somebody, as you well know. Um, Minister, or, uh, Deputy McGrath said at, uh, a little while ago, Ninyarko Kerlikela, and we in Aintu have a saying which is similar to that. We all live under the same sky and we are all responsible for each other. Um, and during this pandemic and during the recession, we have an obligation as politicians, but also as human beings, to look out for the most vulnerable uh, and to identify the groups that are at risk with regards to homelessness or extreme poverty and to do everything we can uh, to protect them. We in Aintu have been monitoring the situation with regards to homeless deaths very carefully over the last month. And it's, it's, it's an incredible situation, Minister. More people have died from in homelessness in Dublin City so far this year than died last year or the year before in the totality of those years. Despite the fact that December and January are some of the toughest months uh, for people who are homeless. And uh, the week before last, we saw Inner City helping the homeless hold an event outside of the Dáil to commemorate the homeless people who have died so far this year in Dublin. 56 black balloons tied to the railings of the Dáil, each one representing a person who has died in homelessness uh, in this city so far this year. And it's an indictment against government policy and government inaction that that is the case. Um, when I raised this issue, in, uh, when the spike in homelessness was at its height in the chamber a number of weeks ago, the Minister for Housing was asked in front of a camera and a microphone about it. And then was asked, would you hold an investigation into it? The Minister for Housing said he would hold an investigation into it. I put a parliamentary question in 10 days later to ask, is there any update forthcoming on that investigation? And so far, there's no information coming. I don't even know, Minister, if there's an investigation into this. Is there an investigation into this? Okay, well, would, would it be possible to share any findings that have happened and the, the, even the timetable of when that study is to be completed with, with, with the rest of the Chamber uh, as well? Um, I want to say that I, I believe there's three actions necessary uh, in this situation. First of all, we need to be able to collect information from the rest of the counties. We need to know how many people are dying in homelessness in the rest of the counties in this country. If we don't know what's happening elsewhere, how are we meant to develop the policy to ameliorate that situation? The second thing is we need standardisation of homeless accommodation. Right now, homeless providers, many of them are unregulated. And the standards within homeless, homeless accommodation at the moment can be very poor. It can be very good, but it also can be very poor. And as a result, we need to have that regulated. HICWA needs to be responsible for it, and there needs to be regular and routine inspections. Thirdly, I've also been made, made aware of an incredible situation that if you're not from Dublin uh, and you go to uh, seek assistance in Dublin, that you're told to go back to your own county to get assistance. Now, in level five, and even in the level we're in, you're not meant to leave the county. So you have one arm of the state telling a person to go back to their own county to receive assistance, and another arm of the state saying, no, you can't do that. And as a result, we have people on the streets without assistance. Nobody should be turned away from uh, assistance in this country, especially in the run-up to Christmas. Um, there's obviously there's a lot of hard-working people uh, who are working in this country currently. A lot of charities, a lot of individuals doing phenomenal work uh, to help people who are in homelessness. And I'm thinking of Brother Kevin from the Capuchin Day Centre here, Councillor Anthony Flynn from the inner city helping the homeless. And these people deserve enormous credit for the work that they're doing on the ground. However, it shouldn't be up to charities to do this work, Minister. The fact that charities have to be involved in this situation shows 
a gaping chasm left by government inaction in this particular space. The government have constantly, I believe, stopped short in helping the vulnerable people during this pandemic, be with those in nursing homes, those in direct provision, members of the travelling community, workers in meat factories, people with disabilities, people with mental illnesses and people who are homeless. These are the people who have suffered by far the most uh, over the last number of years and especially in this pandemic. And I'm calling on the government to show real compassion in the run-up to Christmas. Compassion just not in terms of words, but compassion in terms of actions uh, uh, for these people. Dublin Regional Homeless Executive have furnished me with a lot of information relating to these homeless deaths. And I tell you, it's, it's heartbreaking stuff when you read down into the detail of it. Many of those who have died have died because they've committed suicide or, who, or that they have overdosed. One man was discharged from hospital. He walked around the corner and he hung himself off a railing. Another man was found dead the day after he was released from prison. Many of those in those 56 people that have died are young men and women, and God rest them all. Uh, government departments need to work together in this. We need to make sure that we have prison reform. We need to make sure that there's concrete plans to tackle drug and alcohol abuse, especially from people who are leaving prison or leaving home, uh, homeless shelters, uh, etc., who are leaving hospital potentially as well. Uh, in recent times, I've submitted a freedom of information questions to local authorities on housing issues. And it shows that throughout the country, there are a number of people and families who are in social housing that are being turned away, despite the fact that there are vacant properties. In my own constituency, the Great County of Meath, the, uh, the council told me that they own 3,546 properties. They received 101, sorry, 1,168 applications for housing in the first half of this year. So that shows you the disproportionate demand that there is to supply. They granted only 440 housing applications and 130 properties currently are vacant. Now that is startling. 130 properties in Mead County Council are vacant. Only 127 properties are currently under construction. So why are people being turned away, Minister? That's a really important question we have to get to. Another huge issue that is Scandalous is the fact that traveller accommodation in this country is not being built. Local authorities receive funding from the department specifically earmarked for accommodation for the traveller community. The subject of traveller accommodation is seen by many political representatives as politically toxic. And as a result, local authorities are handing that money back in whole scale to central government. Handing money back for, for homeless people, for housing, back to the government in a housing crisis. It's unbelievable, Minister. Um, I, I, we had a case in Galway just a number of months ago where a house that was uh, built and, and ready for a traveller family was burnt down to the ground. And I welcome the fact that uh, Deputy O'Queeve was one of the few elected representatives that stood up against this action, and I commend him uh, for that. I've pre previously also raised the issue of housing for people with disabilities. One in four people who are homeless have a disability. So that relationship there is way out of kilter than the level of people with disabilities is in the general population. Uh, in some cases, people with disabilities have been waiting way more than a decade. The Disability Federation of Ireland said that there's a significant lack of appropriate housing for people with disabilities, be it social housing, private rental, or privately purchased housing. There is a, a, an especially acute crisis in housing for people with disability. Meath County Council has 173 people with physical disabilities on the housing list with 26 new applications this year. Many houses need uh, adaptations. 70 million euros is provided on an annual basis for those adaptations and I welcome that. But there are 31 local authorities in the state and that money shared over that amount of local authorities doesn't end up to doing uh, a whole heap of work, unfortunately. Um, what we need is quotas, I believe, for people with disabilities within the housing sector. And that's one of the, the, the bills that AIM2 is working on uh, currently at the moment. Just very quickly, single people. Single people are really being stuffed when it comes to housing as well. 13, 14, 15 years, very few uh, units being provided to house single, uh, uh, single people right now. And put this into context, we had a debate with the Minister for Finance here last week who was telling us about the need to put 500 mil million euros in a rainy day fund every year. 
It's lashing raining on people now in homelessness. And yes, the government has had a policy of putting money into the rainy day fund. And the last point I'll say is, permanent TSB won't pay tax on its profits until 2038. AIB won't pay tax on its profits until 2037. And then you wonder why we have a problem.